Hello everyone, so today we're going to be making a defensive sigil, or strength sigil. But more importantly, we're going to be making this sigil out of symbols. I've done other sigil videos where I, you know, work with various um, letters and, um, uh, you know, statements of affirmation and transforming those into sigils. But let's today kind of free write um, with some uh, symbols that are either defensive or strength oriented and try to make a sigil that can uh, d defend us against some kind of, of attack. It could be magical, it could be physical, and it could be all the above. So let's think about some symbols for, at least me, um, that may represent some kind of defense and strong defense. Um, I'm going to throw a lot of symbols out there. They're not all the ones that I would think of just for myself, but I'm going to write down uh, a number of them so that we can kind of get started. So maybe something like a cross, like an iron cross. Maybe even add the outside notches to the iron cross. Maybe Uru's symbol of strength. The Auroch, um, hunted to extinction by Nordic peoples thousands of years ago. Perhaps even an S itself in the English language, just strength, but very rigid, very fortified S. Or perhaps even a D for defense. And Maybe we want to delve into other systems and think of perhaps the symbol of finding oneself for many tribes, which is an inward spiral. It's a very centering symbol. Maybe we can dive into something that looks like A feather, maybe even a peacock feather. The peacock is a very, um, <laughs> it's a very defensive bird. Um, it's very good at protecting and it wants to have its space protected and not have to intruders in it. So if we're going to make a basic symbol for a peacock, basic feather, yes. And then perhaps a bit of an eye in a very crude fashion, something that would be on a feather, but also easily identifiable in our brains. What other symbols could we think of to work with? Let's see, perhaps the hand of Fatima. It's a protective symbol in the Middle East. The hand of the mother protecting children. There's a number of ways that the inside of the palm is drawn. Sometimes it's an eye. Go ahead and go with that since we have a bit of a theme going here. Um, and let's see, what else can we do here? So, the, there's a number of different variations of stars that we can do for even defense and strength. The Wiccan pent Pentec, I always get that word wrong, Pentacle? Pentacle, there we go. And of course, we can also do the upside down, which I'm really bad about drawing an upside down star because I usually just go by, I usually just go by the, uh, uh, the general motions of the regular star, but if we're going to make a star for both descension and perhaps power, we might use a lot of arrows like that. 
And of course, we can always do the Chaos Star. And that looks, as I'm sure y'all know, something, if not exactly, like this. Arrows in all directions. It can be defense and strength, expanding in all directions. So if we're gonna make a sigil out of all these, let's make sure we're seeing the same thing here. If we're gonna make a sigil out of some of these, um, some of these symbols might stick out more to someone than the other ones. Um, I'm just gonna kinda casually cross off at random uh, without making too much of a decision. Some of these, it can be kind of like a very fluid motion of just rejecting some of these symbols and choosing to follow other ones. All right, let's say we're gonna use the Iron Cross and the, um, the tribal symbol of coming to oneself. You want to have a basis. It doesn't have to be the same exact uh, transference of symbols. They don't have to be, you know, taking these two and making an exact copy. You should play with it. Um, you should make it feel right to you. Maybe I want to do one and then another end of this iron cross. And then perhaps use the spiral in the corner. And maybe that doesn't feel right. Maybe I could use the iron cross and maybe another symbol. Maybe I can use the star, for instance. And then put those little lines that go on the ends of the iron cross around that star. Which one of those feels more defense slash strength oriented to you? Putting a dot as a focus center is really good for a sigil. Do that here. Or maybe we can add multiple dots. That Those both feel like pretty solid sigils, even for strength and defense-oriented magic. Maybe, maybe I want to go back and think about something like that peacock feather. Very rough, rigid outline because it is a defense slash strength oriented sigil so and then maybe i want to put that star right there then we can put perhaps some points on this maybe even put some lines in there like from the iron cross and maybe we can bring it to life with the movement of the eye follows these lines like that it feels very like very much like a totem symbol right there it feels like a more totemic um <laughs> almost said teutonic but totemic uh sigil right there but maybe that doesn't also feel right let's see what else we can do i kind of i'm regretting crossing out some of these because i was just like an impulse but yeah it could it could work okay let's go to urus Oros, initiation, strength, symbol of the Auroch, and the hunt of a 15-year-old male, uh, tribal male, thousands of years ago, would have to kill one of these over nine foot tall, standing on all fours, bison-looking creatures. That's where we get the uh, Oros symbol, and we get the word Oros from Auroch, is what they were called are called now, maybe a little bit different back then, but the trick about this is that it's always meant to be a folding into itself and coming to oneself, just like this tribal symbol that pops up in many, many different cultures. So let's follow that. Let's guide it into itself. 
What can we add to that to make it feel defensive and strong? Well, we can do protrusions for the iron cross. If you, don't, if you haven't noticed by now, I do like putting little lines around things, you know, protrusions and lines. That's why I keep on returning to it. But if we have those two, perhaps we can do something else as well. Um, maybe we can even add, we can even add an English letter. A square-like S. Your side. That feels very solid. Maybe uh, some Chaos Star arrows. That feels like a good, a good sigil for defense and strength to me as well. Uh, what else can we do? Let's do something a little bit different than anything that we have here. Maybe something with half arrows. So that, so this is the rune for Isa. Or no, no, Lagos, which is flow, water. Isa is just a line, that's ice. Uh, in the Elder Fruth arc, you know, runic alphabet and spiritual alphabet. That's, uh, that's Isa, and this is Lagos. If we have two interconnecting Lagos, what can we add to that to make it a defense slash strength oriented sigil? A dot in the middle is always good for focus. And then perhaps we can give it a few more sharp points, expansion points. The points uh, denote expansion into the space around it and even protection because expansion and offense can also mean defense. And perhaps we can, suggesting of pools of water and pools of focus of force here, here. That also feels like a very solid sigil. I think we'll do one more real quick so we can wrap this up in a unique way. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna kind of pull some symbols for my mind and think about this for a second. Um, maybe none of these are quite right. Maybe air. It's still a border. Still something that feels like a complete sigil. But maybe just not so sharp. Maybe just kind of like puffing out. And it needs to be a strong center point. For it to feel like a sigil. Maybe an extension and then block it off. And extend beyond the air points. And that feels like a very much like a, a protrusion, like it, it, it's going through the air because of these little wafting extensions that look like clouds. That's a very um, modernistic kind of sigil, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I think that um, I'm gonna do more of these, but this is kind of, uh, this is something that I, I do like to do and uh, something that I'm more than willing to do more videos like this. Um, this has kind of been, you know, a video about turning symbols into sigils and thinking about that. I hope this has been interesting. I hope that you've benefited from this. Feel free to use any of these sigils. I see a lot of good ideas here that just, you know, came off the top of the head um, as I'm kind of like thinking out loud. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button down there um, and please leave a comment. Um, it helps traffic to the channel. Um, no matter what you say, um, uh, I'm more than likely to respond to you, um, as long as you're polite. And feel free to contact me at www.facebook.com slash hunter.salazar, H-U-N-T-E-R, period, S-A-L-A-Z-A-R. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped, and all of you have a wonderful day.